All right, welcome back. So we have set up a quick procedural texture, and now I'm going to show you how you can add your own textures on top of this. Now we don't need the Terrain Toolkit to do this. The Terrain Toolkit has really just given us the basis from which we can work by dropping on these procedural textures, but we can edit them further. So I'm going to come over here to the inspector and close up the Terrain Toolkit and click the triangle next to the regular Terrain script, which will open up all of those tools. And I'm already in the Paint Texture tool. Now, if you weren't already, it's the fourth button over. looks like a little paintbrush. And, of course, that is the same as hitting Shift-R if you have a terrain selected at the time. Now, we can already see that two textures were loaded up. We have the cliff texture and we have the snow texture. Now, even though those have already been dropped down, we still have a little bit of editing control over how these textures behave. So what I'm going to do is rotate around. So again, that's Alt and left mouse, and then Alt right mouse to zoom in. What I want to do is kind of look at one of these cliff walls. And we're going to increase the amount of tiling of this texture. Now, if you're totally new to the world of texturing, you might not have heard of the concept of tiling. Basically, this same uh, little square, this little picture of cliff wall is repeated over and over and over again. And we can increase or decrease the amount, of, the number of times that that is repeated, and that's called tiling. So if we take a look here inside the textures that have been added in, we can select either one just by clicking on them with the left mouse button and then come over to the Edit Textures button. A little menu will pop up and you can choose to add another texture, remove a texture, or right in the middle you have Edit. We're going to click on Edit. This will bring up a tiny little window, which is not so little here on the video, but <laughs> usually it's much smaller than this. I've uh, dragged it out and made it a lot bigger. And this has the Tile X and the tile Y, as well as offsets if you needed to slide the texture around in either X or Y, which would be left and right versus up and down. Now, if we take this number and we reduce it, say from 15 down to 8 in both dimensions, so I'm just going to hit Tab and set them both down to 8, then we have more copies of the texture showing through. We could, conversely, if I hit Shift Tab and go back up, we could set it up to 30 by 30, and we have fewer copies. So I just want to make sure you understand how it works. The, the larger number you choose, that's the larger the sample area, therefore the fewer times. It's kind of... Or it's the larger the tile is altogether. Exactly. It, it's kind of exactly the opposite of what you, you were expecting. If you were hoping that this controlled the number of times that it tiled, then it's exactly the opposite of what you might be looking for. So just remember, larger numbers mean fewer tiles, smaller numbers mean more tiles. So let's see, I'm going to set this to something like 10 by 10. And we'll just go with that and click Apply, and we're all set there. Notice it didn't actually change where the texture was placed, which is a good thing. However, if we were to come back under our Terrain menu, go back down to Set Resolution, change any of these values, and click the Set Resolution button, we will lose all of this work. So be aware of that, and if you like what you've got, you don't really want to mess with the Set Height Map Resolution window anymore from this point on. Which is why we pointed out in a previous video, you want to make sure that you've got your terrain scaled the way you want it, all your features in place before you start the texturing process. Exactly right. Now if we get really close to the snow, we can see that the snow has a little bit of a texture to it. It's not just plain white, but I wouldn't mind it if that uh, tiled a little bit more. So we'll select that, click Edit Textures, click on Edit Texture from the little menu, and just as before, we'll pull this down. I think we will try 8x8 eight eight on this. And as you can see, that just kind of tightens up that little bit of granular noise that is uh, scattered across the, the surface of the snow. Now the next thing I want to do is add a texture that we can use for our path as well as for the flattened areas, for our camp, for the mine area, as well as for the hot spring. So I'm going to go back to Edit Textures. This time we're going to click on Add Texture. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, this brings up the same window. It's just no textures have been put in at this time. Over here on the far right-hand side, you'll see a tiny little circle. And if you click on that, it brings up your uh, Select Texture 2D window. And if we scroll down, I'm going to grab Rock Basic. We'll double-click on that. Now, it, it lets you go ahead and set these tiling properties right now. Really, I don't think I ever change them at this point because I never really know how the tiling is going to look. So I'll just go ahead and click the Add button. Now, we can see that the texture has appeared here inside of our Textures panel. And just kind of as a, a quick note, I want to throw this out there. 
it is recommended. Now, we're not actually going to do it, but it's, it is recommended, especially if you're going to have a lot of different textures, uh, to make sure that your the number of textures you have is in some multiple of four. That's just uh, kind of an optimization thing. I'm not stressed about it because our level is really simple, but if you're one of those best practice kind of people who really likes to keep track of all the little you know sneaky tidbits that come through every now and then, it is a good idea to have uh, numbers of textures that are multiples of, floor, of four. Right, and another trick I like to use is if you do have three and you want to be able to break up the textures because you saw how the pattern repeats, mm -hmm. you can take that fourth texture and bring in, say, a grunge map or a noise map, yep. and you can use that overlaying on all your different textures just to break up the pattern a bit. And by grunge map, he means something that has an alpha channel that is uh, generally transparent and has some dirt on it, that sort of thing? Yep. Cool. So uh, now I'm going to select our new texture that we just added, uh, which is the little rock texture. Now, let's see. Where are we? I have totally forgotten where we are. Um, um, looks like you're in the top of the path going between the two areas. We'll zoom out. We are. And let's just come right in here to our campground. Now, I need to change some settings on my brush. We're going to make the brush a little bit smaller, like so. Let's say down to about 7. And the opacity is at 50. I'm going to pull this down to about 25. We also have target strength. Target strength is kind of like a maximum amount of opacity that can be achieved. Uh, with this set all the way to 1, we can eventually, by layering our strokes, receive 100% opacity for this texture. If we don't ever want to do that, if we don't ever want to get all the way to true full uh, dirt, we can pull this down, say, to uh, somewhere between you know, maybe 0.75, which is like 75%. And so the most amount of this dirt texture we can apply is up to 75%. Uh, we'll still be able to see the snow underneath. So as a quick example, I could just leave it at 1, and then we'll, we'll just put my opacity at about 0.5, well, 50%, basically. And we'll paint down, and that's 50%. And then we can paint again, and that gets all the way through to full opacity because our target strength is set to one. Now if I undo that and we come all the way down to say, oh I don't know, point 0.1 and even if we just paint again right here, point 0.1 is the highest we can go and I can keep layering these strokes over and over and I can't get any higher than basically 10% of that overall texture. So I'll undo that. We're gonna pull our target strength to somewhere around 0 0.65, 0 0.75. I'm not really all that worried about exact values for this. And I'm going to pull my brush size down a little bit, and I like having my opacity way down. Like I said in a previous video, I, I like being able to layer my strokes. So here we can drop down the floor of our campground, and even right there, I think we've got something kind of nice. But I'm going to pull my opacity down even further, really low, to put down my, uh, my pathway. And you can barely see it. If we zoom in, you can just start to see it showing through. And really, this is my preferred way to work. I really would rather layer my strokes on top of one another. Well, it gives you the most control. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we'll just paint down our little pathway. And then here where we kind of branch out, we'll put sort of a, a thickened area. And we'll head out toward the hot spring. And there we go. Is that up on the side <clears throat> of the wall? Is it? Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. Really good, uh, good point that Lee kind of inadvertently brings up. Make sure you rotate your camera a lot. So I'll undo back. In fact, yeah, we'll we'll go back pretty far. Make sure we're in the right location. That's what I get for trying to paint from too far away. And let's see, I'll maybe pull my brush size down just a little bit further. And again, this is one of those things that you can spend as much time as you want on this. It, it just never ends. Oh, yeah. You can really just sit here and tweak this kind of stuff a lot. 
Now let's boost the brush size here, and I'll go ahead and kick up my opacity a little bit, and we'll paint the, the floor of our little spring area, because I don't really want it to look like there's any snow uh, right there at that spot. It wouldn't make any sense. So we'll push that back a little bit. And since my brush is still so big, we'll go ahead and fly over to where we have our little mine landing. And we'll paint that out as well. Now, later on, if we decide, well, you know, you took out too much and we really need to bring some snow back in, no worries. We can just select the snow and we can paint one more time and bring more snow right back in. So don't worry about it having to be perfect, you know, on every single brush stroke. And we'll bring our opacity out. Let's try two so I can maybe get by with just one or two quick strokes. And I think we've got what we need. Now, of course, you have all kinds of you know, editability here. We can kind of soften this up a little bit instead of leaving it as harsh as it was. As I was saying, if we feel we need some more snow in there, you can just switch over to the snow texture and start painting that on. And if you take a look where I'm brushing up here at the top end, you can see that snow starting to reappear. But it is limited. We're, we can only get back up to uh, 0.68 overall based on our brush strokes. And we could even paint on more cliff areas if for some reason we're like, you know, I just, I'd like to see a little more cliff showing right here. We can grab it and just paint it down. So we can make adjustments to what was already created in our procedural texture. Don't think that anything that was dropped down is the final word. You, in the end, have all of the control. And that's a little bit, well, actually it didn't look too bad. It does kind of break things up sort of nicely to have some patches that are showing through here and there. Right. You can bring in a, a secondary cliff texture and layer that on. There's so many things oh, we can yeah. do. Now, I'm trying to keep this example fairly simple overall, but, I mean, if, if you're really excited about this and you really want to play with it, you know, feel free to come in here, click on Edit Textures, add yet another texture, and it could be anything. I mean, I, actually, let me throw something out there just kind of for the fun of it. What if... Oh, I don't know. Let's do something really bizarre. Let's grab, like, this grass moss texture. Or grass, grassy meadow, I think is what that is. Yeah, meadows 2. And we'll add that on. Now, I'm not going to keep this, but I do want to kind of demonstrate it. If we grab, say, this spot up here, we're like, oh, so let's do a grass patch up here for no reason whatsoever. And you think, wow, that looks great, but it's not at all what I had in mind, so let's get rid of it. If I have this texture selected, I can come back to Edit Textures and just click Remove Texture. And it's gone. So it just nukes it right out. And don't be afraid to do that. If you, you could know. also switch out your textures after you paint them. After Ooh. painting this path. Oh, no, I want to show that, too. Okay. Uh, so let's grab, like, the, the path texture we've painted down. We'll go to Edit Textures. And we'll click Edit. As I, to I didn't even think to show that. You're this awesome that you'd bring it up. So now we can click on our little circle to load in our texture again. And now we can pick any other texture. Let's do something really, like, crazy obnoxious, like this really weird blue texture and click apply and now we have this really obnoxious blue texture instead of our our path texture we had before and we can change it back just go to edit textures and edit again make sure we have it selected and I believe we do I just want to double triple check and click apply oh here it. edit texture click on your little texture circle and what we're using we're using rock basic something. rock a rock yeah, basic rock yeah. basic there it is so maybe we want to try out pebbles instead, you know, because we have that ability. So, or rocky dirt. And the cool thing is if you've got enough screen space to do it, uh, you can keep trying out different ones and see how they look while you click. So if I get over here, say to eh, somewhere right about there, I can just sit here and keep clicking on different ones until I like one that I see. And then you can adjust your tile size at the same time, too. It's just what you wanted. Yeah. So let's see, if we, we're using Rock Basics, we scroll down here and we'll try out Pebbles. Pebbles is not bad, but I think I like Rock Basic a little better. And then we think, oh, Tiling could use some adjustment. So we can grab Tiling here and set this to, oh, I don't know, 8 by 8 again. And click Apply. And there we go. So a lot of different things you can do to control. Feel free to add you know, more textures if you want to and you know, just paint the daylight out of your terrain. 
But this is everything that I wanted to show here. So that, unless you have anything else you want to throw out. No, that's it. All right. That is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.